This video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, they got you covered. I am one of those people unapologetically that likes to try out every farming game that comes out. I've just always, my whole life, been obsessed with farming games. It's definitely one of my favorite genres of games in general. I heard about Fae Farm a few months ago, and it was released on Steam and Switch this month, uh, September of 2023. So I wanted to play through it with you guys, you know, kind of talk about my thoughts. This is a $40 to $60 game after all, depending on what version you're playing. So I'm sure that I'm gonna have plenty to discuss. Let's create our character. The mouths are fucking killing me. Like, what is that? I don't have much to say about the character creation. There's quite a few color options and a lot of hairstyles too. Looking back on this now, I wish I would have turned the voice off. <laughs> Just food for thought. But our story begins with a message in a bottle, an invitation to a far off land across the sea. This boat does not look prepared to sail the ocean. And yeah, we got sucked into a whirlpool like it was nothing. No one else responded to the message in a bottle, probably because this place sucks apparently. Whirlpools, blizzards, active volcanoes, and a bunch of other shit going on. Maybe that's what's deterring people. But they're giving me a house for my troubles, which is sick. The biggest fantasy about these games where you move to a new town and become a farmer is that the land is just given to you. Like, thanks for coming to our pathetic town. Here, have a house. Speaking of, we get to name our house. Not a lot of characters to work with here, but I found something that fits my vibe lately. It's Fall Guys. Maybe I can manifest a sexy vampire emo type in this game. Not even sure if you can romance in this one yet though. The characters aren't really giving hot and sexy and dateable in my opinion. Anyways, we got to work cleaning up this dumpy farm. You do have a stamina meter in this game, nothing unusual to see here. I like that the tools auto select when you hover over an object. You know, that's pretty neat. Pro there. We have an almanac too. Okay, slow down, Ben Franklin. Apparently I get to craft furniture from inside of the home instead of using a crafting table or something. And now I have a very big nifty stool with a side of clip. Oh, you craft all items while inside of the areas you place them in. Very neat. And now we are cooking, boys and girls. But when do we get to farming in this farming game? Very quickly, actually, we're being put to work. Mayor Merritt left us some seeds in the storage shed, and instead of tilling soil, we get to craft soil beds, place them, and then plant and water our little seedies. It's actually a lot more intuitive than it looks, really. Very easy. Now we get to hit the town and meet some peeps. Our first stop is Eddie, the old mariner, who gives us a fishing rod. Oh, fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> I was trying to get that little item and I fell right in the ocean. Physics in this game are great. Crazy. All right, time to catch some fish. What the hell? That fish clearly saw me. I even tried jiggling. Okay, I landed right on this one and did a little jiggle. Now we reel it in and what? Okay, okay. I figured it out. We cast right on the fish, kinda. Jiggle, reel her in, and then when they get all angry and red, let up a little. Makes sense, I guess. You know, I never been fishing in real life, but you know, seems like that could be realistic. Mission accomplished. Next up, we got Mel the beekeeper, who is gonna teach us how to catch bugs and critters. Oh, no, not those ones, these ones. Easy enough, it's similar to Animal Crossing with the old sneak and snatch. Before it gets too late, we still need to meet one more person, the merchant, who helps us sell stuff. I guess we sell things by placing them on these little tables in the town square. Interesting. And then we get our money the next day. I don't know who's coming to the town and buying things overnight. But also the next day we learn that there is a town wizard who would like to discuss the weird and wacky magic in the area. Alaric, the wizard, won't do any of that actually until I bring him a home cooked meal. He basically told me to get back in the kitchen where I belong. Just kidding. I made him a little seafood snack and apparently he doesn't actually want to discuss magical things till tomorrow. Rude. I was excited to figure out what the deal with all the thorns was. I decided to explore the town and check out some shops. Turns out you need to also trade items, mostly undiscovered to me, in order to purchase a lot of the items. But that will allow me to spend my money wisely, you know? Because <laughs> I can't buy a lot right now. Okay, I was a little responsible. I bought some seeds from the seed man and collected materials to craft more soil beds. I'm a good little farmer who plants, 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 plants. The next morning, 
morning, like right in the morning. I didn't even leave my bed yet. Alaric awarded me a magical staff that clears the thorns. He didn't really show me in game, but I could probably figure out how to use it. I still have to run over to his house to collect my reward for this quest, so I'll jump on over and that's it? All right, I guess I'll put my staff to the test on these thorns. Oh yeah, they just need a good whack. After smashing some thorn, I found a new area to explore, a very scary one. But I don't know if I am supposed to be here yet. You know, I'm just a farmer, guys. This is above my pay grade. By the end of night three, I had already cleared out my farm besides the trees. The next day, I got my first batch of crops in, turnips, so I put them up for sale, grabbed some more seeds, and replanted. I want to get my farming level up so I can plant new crops since I only have three seed options right now, I believe. The old mariner, Eddie, gave me a fishing quest today, which of course, you know, I'm a fishing expert now, so that was no problem. But God, why is fishing so weird in this one? Maybe it's time to start talking with some of the other townies. I can't really just move to a brand new place and be a total recluse, you know? Nobody really had anything interesting to say, and I was curious as to what building relationships with townies would look like, so I went to the relationships tab, and there's not really much info here, but also so much info. I saw some people that I haven't even met yet and it kind of felt like a spoiler or something. I mean, I figured there would be magical beings in this game, but like, damn, you know, I wish I could have like met them before I knew about them, you know? Also, you can romance. I'm gonna figure out how to do that, even though nobody in this game is particularly hot and sexy. It's giving Roblox a little bit. Maybe I'll become a personality girl. <laughs> I did try to go out and seek quests too, and the first one I got was to reach friend status with a townie. I can talk to people and gift them to accomplish that, but you can only gift them specific items it seems, and some people don't have the gift option at all when interacted with, so maybe that'll be something we unlock as we discover more items, or maybe we need to talk to people more, I don't know, I'm just guessing here. We finally figured out how to buy animals from Erlene, who gave us the key to our coop and sold us our first chicken or chiku. Interesting generated name here. We can only purchase one animal at a time as we have to escort them home individually. We got Chicky home, registered her, and returned to the ranch to meet Loretta, who taught us how to feed animals using plant fiber, which we have an ass load of. That makes life easy. And after escorting this little bunny thing home, we have two cute little friends to take care of and check on each day. Okay, now we are talking. We finally get to check out what goes on down in the mines. They might be the source of the magical whirlpools that have caused all this shipwrecking. So we spoke to Cleo, who doesn't trust that I can take care of myself in the mines due to the dangerous creatures that inhabit it. I proved to her I am capable of protecting myself by cooking up some food, buying some healing potion. And then I was granted access to the saltwater mines. Here's how the mines work. You start on level one and you have to uncover switches by mining rock or digging dirt that will unlock the door to the next level. I'm searching for copper here mainly because I need a lot of it to craft a maker called a ceiling station. The ceiling station will allow me to craft seals to permanently open doors to the floors of the mines. I got to unlock quite a few floors before I ran out of copper seals. And I'm curious how deep the mines actually go. There's ore to be mined and monsters to be fought. You just hit them with your magic stick though. It's all good. I'd like to know if the magic thing is more complex because this seems pretty silly to hit someone with a magic staff rather than, you know, using magic. I mean, there's a mana meter near our health stamina bars, so there's gotta be, right? Before I figured that out though, I decided to try upgrading my tools. It would be nice to not have to exert so much time and energy on mining, so I got my materials, crafted a forge, smelted some bar, and brought them over to the blacksmith to upgrade some of my tools to copper. I only need needed one bar per tool. I do wish there was a way where you could choose where you spawn in the mines. Like I have seals for a lot of these floors. You know, you're really just gonna make me walk all the way to the floors I wanna go to, sit through a loading screen each floor. There has to be a better system to this. Like there's no fucking way that it's just like this. So, you know, I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm gonna complete these mines. There's 25 floors total. And with the help of tool upgrades and crafting these seals to open doors permanently, I reached level 15. 
18. There, I was met with a roadblock. Even though I had used a seal in this room, I need to go complete a quest with Cleo to actually unlock the door. I had already unlocked the iron pickaxe, but had to use its new magical ability to complete this quest. This is actually kind of cool. Quest is done. Now I can run all the way back to level 15 and unlock the door officially and sit through all the loading screens. But eventually I was able to start pushing on to further levels and check out new enemies, gems, and minerals. Okay. I'm just an idiot. There's totally a way to fast travel to the floors. You just have to go up to the seal on the first floor. Yeah, never really claimed that I was uh, the smartest. Something else I had noticed are these little shrine things around the map that require seals made from gems that I found in the mines. I was able to craft one and apparently these are waypoints, allowing us to fast travel to different waypoints that we unlock. That'll cut down on walking quite a bit. I was able to get a Peridot seal crafted, so now we can warp between the farm and the saltwater mines. I guess I should stop obsessing over the mines and work on my farm a little bit more. I don't wanna neglect anything. I have crops to tend to, and I'm not really even close to level 10 farming to get more seeds, but my animal crossers will get a kick out of this. There's flower breeding in this game. Yes, you can lay down flower beds and breed flowers, supposedly. I didn't go out of my way to learn how to do this or look up a guide, so I'm just experimenting here, but I have a quest to grow a pink flower. Not sure how that'll work yet, so I will put some white and red flowers next to each other and wait. Let's also take a second to work on some quests that I've been taking over the last couple days and some new ones that have popped up. I got to make some bevies with a beverage machine, use fertilizer for the first time on some crops, and got to work figuring out the home decorating situation. I got a quest to up the coziness level in my house by filling it with objects that increase the coziness levels. No problem, I got tons of things to craft with, I can figure this out. I just need one more cozy point to complete this quest. I'm gonna make another stool. Can't stack cozy points with the same items. What? I'm gonna need more crafting materials. I think I've wandered aimlessly enough. Let's figure some of this shit out. The things I've left undone. First, the coziness level in the house. Done. Now we've got flowers. I've noticed that the flowers haven't bred since they've been grown in. Maybe I need to put more beds around the flowers. Sure. Now relationships. I could have sworn this bachelor wanted brown snails the other day. Now he wants oak lumber. Okay, let's chop up some log and make some lumber for him then. Ooh, he did hearts. Well, I think everyone does hearts. Okay, maybe I'm getting the romance thing down. Oak lumber is kind of a bitch to make, but you know, I'm up for this task. Next up, money. I don't know if it's a good idea to sell these, but I made them in the gem polisher, so fuck it, let's get rich. I'm gonna use the bulk of my newfound wealth to upgrade my house. And the next day, my house was bigger. We also have a produce stand on our farm and can sell more items and items more conveniently from the farm. Now we gotta figure out how to do artisan goods. Back to the saltwater mine, though. We finally made our way down to level 25, the very bottom, and met up with a magical water being named Nepi. She is wild and out. Apparently, that's what was causing the whirlpools around the island. She's requesting I bring a bunch of snacks and then she'll stop whipping around. So I got started on gathering Nepi's requests. I'm getting the hang of fishing. It's definitely something you have to get used to. And I also crafted a few new makers, the cooking hearth and food prep table. I use the food prep table to cut stuff up up and the cooking hearth to make more complex recipes like the steamed fish that Neppy asked for. Eventually, after several days, I had collected everything. My reward was a picnic the next day and our very first real spell, Vortex. It got rid of those nasty whirlpools and can get rid of the black clouds on what I assume is gonna be an extension of my farm. I also started taking romance quests. The most romantic thing Jack here can do is ask me to bring him shit. Sure, I guess. I was able to take three fetch quests at one time, get his rockfish, and then the next day I was gonna bring him over a few of the quest items and the quest changed? I think? I'm not sure. He took beach logs from me. I don't know what that was, but the other quests disappeared. Maybe they're time sensitive. Anyways, I'm taking other romance quests too. You know, this game's version of seeing other people. I can give gifts, you know? I don't think Jack and I are exclusive. Also, when did all these magical people show up? I'm confused. Were they always here? Oh, the day the harbor reopened, I hopped on the first ship to Azoria. Well, that's neat. Maybe I would have known that if I didn't skip all the dialogue, mostly. It's not 
not my fault the dialogue is really fucking boring. All anyone talks to me about is thorns, mostly. I had a vision come to me from the wisp mother. She's giving harvest goddess, okay girl. She wants me to clear a path to go see her, which I can do now with my magical spell. Oh my god, she's huge. Now that we met the wisp mother, literally mother, she offers to make us wings if we bring her flutter dust. We can make it by crafting a little conservatory and placing some critters inside of it. The critters will then be sacrificed to create various critter related objects. One of those things being flutter dust. And now we've got some sick ass wings. We can basically double jump now with a little extra swag. Our next big story thing is to find the Fey Gate, a portal that leads to the Fey Realm. The first place I'm gonna check is the spooky woods. That's where the big gap is, remember? You know, the one I fell into earlier? Okay, and then I just fell into it again just now. Sick. We found the gate. The Wisp Mother tells us the gate was sealed a long time ago and humans were forced out of the Fey Realm due to the terrible miasma that was just ruining everything. Sure, let's open it again. Sounds like a great idea. I could take a little miasma. So I brought Wisp Mommy all the polished gems she asked for and the next day the gate was open for business. The miasma has already started to seep out. I can't be exposed to too much of it. Not sure what happens, but you know, there's a meter. An elf by the entrance tells me to go speak to a Another elf, a chemist, potion making elf. I need to craft a potion to help with all of this miasma exposure. I've got to collect quite a few things from this new area, the Fey Realm, in order to start crafting potions. There's a lot of new critters and objects here. On the last day of the season, I got the last of my potion ingredients from another critter conservatory and handed in the goods. Things are getting serious between Jack and I. He asked me on a little date. How cute. I got to learn a little bit about his background. His family have been loggers, for generations and he's really into nature. What a sweet guy. And now we're getting serious. But now that it's summer, I guess I better take a break from questing and work on my farm a little. She's sort of coming together. Now, believe it or not, I'm still not at level 10 farming and I don't know why. I feel like I've been farming a lot, but I can't buy the other seeds yet. And the seeds don't change when the seasons change. I don't really understand this, but I'm gonna buy a bunch of this fertilizer that can transform crops into other seasonal crops. I think and hope for the best. I also have unlocked and cleared out the other side of my farm. The area with a barn. I can now get cows and sheep or mammoths and woolly horns. I like taking care of animals. It's definitely taken a back seat, but the stuff they provide is useful for crafting, so it's worth it to check up on them every once in a while. Now I guess I gotta be in charge of going to the floating ruins. I thought elves weren't affected by miasma in the way humans are. Like, I think I die if I'm in it for too long. Why the fuck would we send me there, a human? The floating ruins are similar to the saltwater mines. It's a mine, dungeon. Instead of uncovering covering switches, we gotta get these little pink guys to follow us so we can unlock the doors to the next levels. Or just have the appropriate seals to keep the doors open permanently and use the floor selector, which is what I prefer to do. This one is definitely more challenging and engaging than the saltwater mines. The floors are a little harder to navigate initially, but you kinda get used to the layouts as you go along. And as we progress and need to collect new ores and gems, the difficulty scales, obviously, so we need to keep upgrading our tools. The miasma is also very concentrated in here, so you need to be using the miasma protection potions during the duration of your mine time. I did succumb to miasma once, when I ran out of potions. I don't really know what the consequences were besides being kicked out. While I worked on getting to level 25 of the floating ruins, I also started taking job quests. These are kind of just busy work quests that townies will give you so you can always have something to do. It's busy work, but also the rewards can be cool, and working on skills is helpful in general. Also, I managed to make some artichokes chokes using that seasonal crop fertilizer. This is a very weird way of doing it, but yeah. Okay, now I can make artichoke seeds, but I want to find out if there's a way I can just buy them because this seems very silly. I'm making pretty good time on the floating ruins. I have to farm for certain materials to upgrade my tools and craft door seals. But at level 25, we finally figured out what was causing all the deadly miasma. This blob mushroom? They'll stop making it if I bring them a bunch of stuff. The only thing that took me a little longer to collect were the polished emeralds. Nothing a little mind grind can't help with. And before we knew it, we had collected all of the quest items and the next day we helped with clearing the miasma using my new spell. Now the elves have come back to Azoria and the miasma has stopped spreading. Things have been uh, heating up with Jack. After a few gifts and romance quests where I also give gifts, we were officially dating. Our second date was on the beach. I learned more about his family and 
Wait, you don't make fun of the way I say out or about? Is he Canadian? Anyways, he kind of invited himself to live with me. Little awkward. He did apologize for being awkward in a letter and invited me on another date. This time we get to chat by a candlelit dinner. I love how he's talking and my character is just going off with the emotes. He thinks I'm a total boss and that I've been doing cool shit. Thanks, babe. <laughs> you know, I've been putting in work. Uh-oh. I found my mysterious goth babe that I was looking for. Shit. Well, things are getting serious with Jack, so I'm gonna stick with him, I think. I've really been vibing with the gameplay here, guys. I work on my farm, do my animals, do mining, slowly chip away at quests. Whether they be friend, job, romance, or story quests. But now that the Fey Realm is doing good and we have a new spell, we get access to a whole other farmland near the Elven Village. Yeah. Don't mind if I do. I've also figured out how to do shipping contracts to hopefully make more money. And instead of selling my crops raw dog, I am now making artisan goods, which does make a lot more money too. But we're now in chapter six of eight in Fey Farm. The next region we get to brave is the Frozen Plateau. I have to prepare to be exposed to the harsh cold in this region and hot tea won't help me. I need to make a potion. But this region's big magical beast is Grell, who's having a tough time. So he made a blizzard, as you do. We just walked right up to him. No dungeon or mine here, and now we'll work on gathering the requested items so he can hopefully stop the blizzarding. This area isn't big like the Fey Realm, but there is one part of it I can't get to quite yet. For now, I'm working on Grell's quest items. Everything is pretty straightforward. Gotta go back and mine for some more sapphire, make some stuff using various crafting tables. But the frost beet is a little more complex. Frost beet is a special Fey crop, so I either need to lay down Fey crop beds on my regular farm to grow them, or grow them right here on my new farm in the Fey Realm. A little sprinkle of dust and wow, frost beats. We're good to go now. The day after I gave Grell what they requested, we cleared the blizzard together, the snow melted, and the river started to flow again. I got a new spell in my wand, and using that new spell, I cast Charm on the little blob dudes, blocking my access to the fiery volcano zone. This too is a 25 floor dungeon mine, but I need some sort of fire protection potion in order to go in there at all. Or I'll burn up. Rough. Well, I looked it up. In order to make that potion, I need to be able to forge for frost thistle. Can't cut it yet. Tool not powerful enough. So I gotta farm silver. Make bar. Upgrade my tool. And then I need another critter's observatory because I need some new little critter parts. But wait, I still need to get the recipe for this potion. <laughs> Apparently I didn't have that the whole time. I need to fish up some ice mountain fishies. Ah, fuck. I need a better fishing rod to catch these guys. Okay, let me go buy one. Shit, I need level seven fishing. Oh my God. Fishing in this game actually fucking blows. I haven't hardly fished at all beyond what is necessary, but okay, I'll go grind this shit out and get it over with. I need to know how this story ends. I found on Reddit that there's a simple fishing setting and if I'm gonna make it through this, I have to try it out. Oh, it, what, wait, what? Oh. Guys, it's not that much simpler. It just makes it so you don't have to hold down the left click to reel in, you just click on and off. Still works the same, at least on PC. Man, disappointing. I was hoping they would just let me cheese it. No, this definitely has to be more of like an accessibility option. I need a break. We'll come back to fishing in a minute. But all in all, Jack and I had a pretty hot and steamy summer. Full of dates and gifts. I learned more about his ambitions, yada, yada, yada. He's going against the grain doesn't want to be a logger like the rest of his family. The, the dialogue in this game is not my favorite, but I finally was able to propose marriage and in turn, he proposed to me. Okay. And after paying a hefty fee of 10K, we were set to be married fall first. The wedding was beautiful. Kinda. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but my mouse click was not working during this entire dialogue. I was clicking everywhere until I found one tiny spot that worked. But yay, we're married now. Not sure what this means for future gameplay, but I think that he's just gonna hang out around here. It is autumn now. I think I've gotten used to the farming stuff, kinda. I don't really like that I can't just straightforwardly buy seeds for crops I wanna grow, honestly. It's not a huge thing, but I just would like for 
it to be not so convoluted for the sake of being different. If I wanna grow anything besides the basic seeds in the shops, I have to put special fertilizer on it, then it'll turn into a seasonal crop. Like, ugh, I just wanna ask why, but I digress. I got major farm cleanup to do. I finally got a clue and finished up my last few fishing levels in the Fey Realm. It was irritating, but I got it done. Now to fish up those little ice mountain fish. Oh. I need the rod. Oh my God, I'm gonna need to make $7,500. Okay, time to pull out all the stops here. First, get rid of all my artisan table stuff. I already sold a lot of this recently, so it's time to hit the mines. I'm just gonna go gem crazy and polish them all. That seems to be at the top of everybody's money-making tips list. Okay, moment of truth. Oh shit. Oh shit, let's go. That pushed us over the perfect amount. And now I got all my rods. My fish are caught, quest complete. And now I'm thinking, wait, what if I just needed the second rod upgrade? You know what? It's too late now. Okay, so apparently when I stopped the blizzard, it made the heat from the volcano just too powerful. You're welcome, by the way, for stopping the blizzard. So now I gotta figure that out, but luckily we have the recipe for the fire potion, so we're going to finally brave the volcano dungeon. This one is slightly more complicated when it comes to opening doors. We've gotta gather a little blue flame, either from mining or combat, and take it to a flame holder, and then it'll open the door for us. We can use the blue flame torches along the way to keep our flame alive longer until we get there. If we fuck it up, we can go back to where the blue flame spawned and try again. Or you could just get materials for the seals and not do all of that. This one is way harder for sure. I'm just trying to get through this shit, man. It's pretty much the same throughout all the dungeons. First four floors take seals made of whatever ore is lying around. Next four are made of that ore and whatever gem. Next four, same thing, just keep it pushing. And then of course it gets a little easier once you upgrade your pickaxe. You guys know all this. We've done this already twice before. Not only do we upgrade our pickaxe, but various other tools so that we can harvest some of the other items in here. Some of which are requests for the big flame magical entity at the end. For this picnic, we are requested to get a bunch of items mostly from within this dungeon, but also some fey crops. It takes a while for the crops to grow, but that also gives me an opportunity to work on my farm in the meantime. I wanna separate all the little sections of my farm by function, like the cooking stuff in one corner, crops all organized. It's easy to get carried away decorating in this one, and it takes up a lot of resources to craft everything, so you can go out and gather what you need to. You know, it gives you something to do. But after a few days, my flame hearts had grown in, so everything was delivered to the angry fire. And the next day, the volcano was cooled, capped off with rocks, and I got the last spell I needed in my magical staff. Using the spell, I can now break open the big fire rocks, one of which leads us to another farm. Yup, frozen farm. Now we have three whole farms. That's crazy. The wisp mother thanked me for all the amazing, beautiful, wonderful work that I've done for Azoria. And my final story quest was to talk to the elf who basically gave me $10,000 and told me to fuck off. Not really, he just didn't really say anything. <laughs> We're not quite done yet. The wisp mother came to us in a dream and requested we come by again. She's asking for polished gems, you know, the things that I've been crafting and selling for fast cash. So yeah, had to go farm for those materials for a second, but we got another fat stack of cash for doing all that, and the final chapter of the game is complete. Azoria is restored, and everybody's chillin'. Roll credits. All right, I have a lot to say about this one. First of all, I'd like to start by saying that I went into this game expecting something not very good. I was a little late to play this one, so I had heard chatter about how bad the game was, how it wasn't worth the money, and tons of negative feedback in general. I'll be honest, my feedback is generally positive. Sure, I have a few gripes that I'd like to gripe about, but overall I got 40 hours of gameplay and that's with speeding through the main story, which is not something that I personally recommend for games of this genre, but I wanted to see why people were saying this game, quote, didn't have enough content. I went back and watched some of the people who had negative reviews about this game and noticed that they weren't very far into it. And looking back at my own gameplay, yeah, you know, I can see why. I think there's some general pacing issues with the story initially. I would say the game really picks up and starts to be more engaging once you get your wings. A lot of the negative feedbackers I noticed hadn't gotten to that part of the story yet. Is that their fault? No, I don't think so. Some of my negatives. Well, 
I think the game has a lot of bugs and visual glitches, so I'm hopeful things will start to get patched up over time. I'm pretty lenient about that stuff nowadays because it feels like 90% of games, especially from smaller studios, have this issue, and I'm tired of bitching about it. Secondly, the dialogue isn't all that amazing. Socialization and romance in this game is pretty lackluster. I don't care about becoming friends with anyone, and getting married wasn't really special or anything. No one is really saying anything interesting. They're all just commenting on on the latest thing I achieved in the story. It's no secret that I think Stardew Valley is the gold standard for farming sims. I hate comparing things so regularly, I try not to do that, but it is relevant to some conversations. Stardew takes things that were established in Harvest Moon and makes them infinitely better. It plays amazing, honestly. And so I think that new farming sims try so desperately to ride off the success of Stardew Valley and try to do things just a little differently so they don't get accused of copying homework. They Farm isn't egregious about this, but there's little things here and there that are different and for why? I don't know. Small thing, but an example. I can't bind the escape key to be back for whatever reason. I am so used to that from Stardew that it pissed me off that I can change my key binds but can't do that one. And then the crops and seeds thing. Why is it so convoluted? If there is a game that is in the top 10 best-selling PC games of all time that does things one way, you don't have to go out of your way to be so different that it's confusing and strange to players. But I feel like that isn't as big of a problem in this game as it might be for others that I've played. However, the comparisons are going to happen, so you know, those are just little things that I've noticed that aren't game-breaking by any means, but I noticed them. The almanac, notifications, super excessive. Like visiting a shop, hovering over items, do I really need an almanac notification block taking up my screen for the next several minutes over some wallpapers? The makers are just fucking out of hand. Like, I'm sorry, why do I need three separate cooking objects? And why the hell would anyone want this many makers lying around their farm? This is just ridiculous. This isn't even all of them. To me, fishing in this game is totally not my thing. I've heard that some people really like it though, so to each their own. It's kind of up to your personal preference. All the other skills were fine. Festivals weren't really much. The first one, the Petal Bloom Festival, just had two quests you had to complete. Plant 15 flower seeds and craft items using flowers. I didn't complete the second quest because I failed to realize it was timed and didn't buy the crafting recipes in time. So I'll never know if there was something I missed out on there. I wasn't going to let the second festival, the Hook and Line Festival, slide past me though. I completed both quests, the first being to catch fish and the second being to steam it up and boom, both quests done. Now what? Well, I failed to realize that I should have visited the town hall to have an opportunity to buy special wallpapers and clothing on the actual festival day. So, whoops, not really much to say about festivals. But that's not to say that I don't have anything positive to say about this game. I really, really liked certain elements of it. I think that there's a ton of content. Some of it might be considered bloat, but what farming game doesn't have a little bit of that? One thing that I noticed about farming games lately is that they give you more farms, so you can't claim their there's not enough farming. Here's a farm in a new region. Neat. But, um, is it necessary? No. I don't care much for it. I don't see myself wanting to maintain three whole separate farms. I think my one gripe about adding extra farms is if there's no other content to do in the region afterwards. And that is true for Fey Farm because there's nothing really to go and do in that area with those characters after you've unlocked the farm. Overall, I think this game plays well, and if you don't speed through the main story and instead take your time building up skills, talking to townies, farming, mining, you can probably stretch out the main story quest to span the entirety of the first year, I would say. And even after you're done with the main story quest, there's all of the little side quests that you can do. You can work on friendship, you can work on your farm, or your three farms, because you now have three farms. If you're not super into the socialization aspect of these games, then I don't know if you'll have much to complain about at all in Fey Farm. Do I think this game is worth $60? Well, first of all, full disclosure, I was gifted a key to this game, so I didn't pay for it. And I think that I'm playing the $40 Steam version. The only version available on Switch is $60. What comes with the $60 deluxe version of Fey Farm? The soundtrack and two content packs that aren't even released yet. I would say, save your money, 
probably don't buy the $60 version unless you're like super sold and will remain sold until December 2023 and fucking June 2024 when those content packs come out. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. It is so hard for me to say this game is worth $40 when Stardew Valley is $15. It is so fucking hard. Farming game pricing in general has been thrown for a loop ever since Stardew Valley because that game has given me hundreds of hours, is my favorite game ever really, and so it's hard for me to say anything is worth more than $15 if I really think about it. It is up to you, really. I'm also Queen Nintendo Dick Rider and will pay $60 for anything that has a picture of Mario on the cover. Anyways. I'll stop overanalyzing and trying to explain my position, but I would say that if $40 is worth around 40 hours of content upwards to you, Bay Farm is pretty good. Don't listen to the reviews of bitches who haven't even gotten their wings yet. But thank you for listening to me ramble. Not only can I go on and on about farming games, I can also do the same for today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you've ever thought that you needed a website for something like yourself, your brand, your store, Squarespace is a great, super easy website builder to help get you started. They have countless amazing templates for any type of website that you might be in need of. And their e-commerce tools are great if you're trying to get a store started. Websites can be a pain. It could be difficult to get it set up and looking all pretty and professional, you know, it can be a lot. Squarespace is super user friendly, getting the website of your dreams is no problem. I recently have wanted to make a few changes to my website and I wasn't even phased by the task because I know in my heart that customizing my website with Squarespace is so simple. They have tons of amazing tools that I can use to embed videos, you know, because videos are my thing. And I love that I can check my detailed analytics to see how you guys are liking my website changes. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash list the last or use my code list the last and you'll save 10% off of your very first purchase of a website or domain. So I feel like I had a lot to talk about with Fae Farm. I have a very high standard for farming life sims. So definitely decide for yourself if you're going to buy Fae Farm. Um, let me know if you have bought it, what your thoughts on it are. If you liked this video, you might like the video that I did about Hello Kitty Island Adventure. I had a glowing review of that game. I definitely think you should check that video out, especially if you're on the hunt trying to find a new game to play, something to be obsessed with. I am fully obsessed with Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Anyways, I hope you're having a great day and you continue to do so and I will see you in the next one.